Hey everyone, and welcome back. So what I thought we'd do today is a quick recap and what I thought of what we saw in yesterday's Nintendo Indie World Showcase. And although I do think this is one of the better indie worlds we've had in a while, I want to end the video as well with a couple of thoughts of things that we didn't see that I was hoping to get information on and hopefully they will be announcing pretty soon. And as we're going through all this, don't forget that if you do like what you're seeing to please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now the indie world got my attention right away with their first game that they announced, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Now graphically this game looks quite amazing and I'm getting serious jet set radio vibes from it. The setup looks interesting with you grinding through the city, tagging different elements and trying to take control of things. But I will be honest, my hype did die down quite a bit when it was only announced for 2022 without any specification beginning, end or middle. Nonetheless, we'll be keeping our eyes on this one, but I'm going to be keeping the hype level pretty low till we get a more solid release window. So next, we got a look at Toem, a black and white photo adventure game that, you know what, has a very clean and interesting aesthetic to it. Overall, I don't think this game would be on the top of my lists for a release video, but you know, nonetheless, we'll find out if it's a decent game in fall 2021. Now next, we got a look at a game called Loop Hero, which seems to be a dungeon crawler, but it has a really original premise where you don't actually control the hero, you rather set up the loop that he has to travel to. And using apparently cards, as you can see from the right side of the screen, you have to help him along this adventure and make sure he gets through and gets as far as possible in the dungeon. Now, at first glimpse, the graphics in this game, I really wasn't too sure. Then I saw that it was Devolver Digital doing this game, and I know that they have a huge track record of doing a lot with games that on the surface don't look very appealing, but they end up being great experiences. So anyway, this one is a game I will be looking out for. It should be hitting in the holiday season of this year. Now next, we got a look at a game called Far Changing Tides. And I've got to say that so far, visually, this was the most stunning game we saw so far in the Indie World Direct. Now the developer describes it as a post-apocalyptic exploration puzzle game. And it actually turns out to be a sequel to Far Loan Sales that is actually already on the eShop. And you know what, this game's visuals has got me so interested that I'll probably be checking out that first installment later today. Now next, we finally got to the Shadow Drop section of the indie world. And you know what, we got four games back to back announced to be Shadow Dropping today. And the first of these games is Necrobarista, which seems to be a story driven game about the people before passing on to the next world, having one last night to party or at least spend some time in this special bar. Now, personally, this first Shadow Drop didn't have me too excited because it's not really the main type of game I like to play. However, if you're into this type, we will probably know very shortly whether the game is good or not. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to check out reviews on other channels since it Shadow Dropped yesterday. Next, however, is a Shadow Drop. We got a game that I was very strongly interested in, Garden Story. Now, Garden Story is a game I've been following since E3 of this year, and I couldn't wait for it to get a solid release date. And to my huge surprise, it was shadow dropping today. It is an action RPG that also seems to have farming elements added to it, which is two genres of gameplay that I just love. So right here, this indie world just jumped up a major notch for me in the excitement level. And no matter what was happening, I knew I would at least have one great shadow drop game to check out from the list. Now next, they switched to Boyfriend Dungeon, which is a dungeon crawler slash dating sim. Now I will tell you that I laid eyes on this game for the first time also at E3 of this year, and originally I had zero interest in this game. However, in this trailer, something finally became clear that has actually sparked a little bit of interest. It's that the reason that it's a dating sim slash dungeon crawler is that your weapon is your boyfriend. Your weapon has both a human form and a weapon form. And it sort of reminded me of the anime concept from the Zampak Toes from Bleach. Now I'm not saying that I will jump right into this game, but I finally might check it out when I have some time because understanding that concept has actually, as I said earlier, sparked a little bit of interest. Now next came the announcement that actually made this indie world a total, total hype event. Basically, they announced that Axiom Verge 2 was shadow dropping on the eShop today. Now, if you're unaware, Axiom Verge is a Metroidvania style of game. The original one released all the way back in 2015, and almost since the release of this game, people have been clamoring 
for a sequel. And it's pretty much at this point that I knew that for my today stream, I would be either doing Garden Story or Axiom Verge. I was still keeping a spot open just in case some other Shadow Drop made its way onto the list. But no matter what, most likely one of these two games I would be streaming the next day. And then I saw my beautiful Shovel Knight. And I had my fingers crossed so hard that we were getting a Shovel Knight Shadow Drop. Finally, however, it ended up not being a mainline Shovel Knight game, but rather a puzzle slash dungeon crawler spin-off. But you know what? From the screenshots I saw, I was nonetheless very, very interested in this game. So I was really still hoping that they would announce that it was going to be Shadow Drop today so that I could play this game as soon as possible. But finally, my bubble was burst and it wasn't releasing today. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait till the holiday season of this year. Then oddly enough, we did get another Shadow Drop which is Islanders. Now this game actually seems pretty interesting. It's a procedurally generated city builder. And you know what? For someone who wants a laid back city builder approach, I do think that this game will be very interesting. Now, once again, with so many games on my plate right now, unfortunately this one won't make it to the top of the list, but I do think that someone looking for this type of game should definitely check it out because there seems to be a lot of potential. Once again, we shouldn't have to wait too long. There should be reviews coming out shortly. Now next, we got a glimpse at Metal Slug Tactics once again, and we got a confirmation that it was coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now once again, the more I see of this game, the more interested in it I become. Especially that last glimpse at the huge snake-like boss fight looks actually quite amazing. And anyway, just at the titles Metal Slug and a strategy RPG, you had already convinced me that I was excited for this game. On the downside, however, we didn't get a specific release window. We only got a notice that it'll most likely be coming in 2022. Now, next, we got a look at a game called Tetris Effect Connected. Now, look, this game is looking good. There's only one really thing holding it back. It's that Tetris 99 is still a thing. So I really don't know if this game is going to manage to be popular and get a following but we'll find out later this year because it's releasing on October 8th. So next we got a sizzle reel. And you know what? I'll just plug in most of it right here. It was only about a minute and a half. I've got to say that nothing really caught my attention in a major way, other than maybe slightly the wine making simulator. And also the fact that they were shadow dropping two other games called one Slime Rancher and the other one Curious Expedition. But the fact that they put those two games in a sizzle reel rather than having specific sections about those games doesn't make me think that these will be top-notch releases. And then they pretty much ended the whole thing with one last game being announced from Chucklefish. Now the game is called Eastward, and I'll tell you right away, visually, the game looks right up my alley. There's only one thing, the trailer had mostly cinematics, and I prefer when trailers have mostly gameplay in them. And yes, towards the end of the trailer, we do get some gameplay, but it's still very hard to make out what exactly type of game this is going to be. But you know what? We won't have to wait too long and since they took the time to close out their indie world with this i'm expecting this to be a pretty solid release it's coming out on september 16th so you know what that was pretty much it for this indie world and i've got to say right away with the shadow drops of both garden story and axe and verge this makes this in my book right away an excellent indie world there were, however, two huge puzzle pieces that I do want to say I am super disappointed we didn't get more information about. The first one being Hollow Knight Silk Song. Look, I was really hoping to finally get a release window for this game. It's a game I've been looking out for and I can't wait to play. And the second one being the new TMNT game Shredder's Revenge. Once again, I was really hoping for some kind of a release window for that game as well. Now look, I don't want to kill all hope, but with this already being August, Having an indie world and them not talking about those two games, I really don't think we can look forward to seeing them at all in 2021. But who knows, the developers might just do their own thing, but it is not very likely. So anyway, I open up the floor to all of you. Let me know what you thought of this indie world showcase. 
And don't forget on the way out to hit that like button if you like the content, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. As usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.